Can I be real here for a second? Can I be? Can I? Can I just tell you guys something? I got scammed by this exact scam. And here's the reason. Let me just hey. Let me just justify why it happened. I got an email from somebody sending me a package saying, "Hey, I'm sending you the package right now. You should be getting a notification." And it just happened that I got this. I got the notification at the moment that they that he said it. So I checked the notification. I was like, oh, notification. I clicked it to see when it was going to happen and said, hey, there was a problem with the shipping. You have to update this. So I updated it, and then I got had. And then I realized I got had at that moment. And then literally five minutes later, the notification came in saying, hey, here's your package. Here's when it's going to happen. And I was like, oh, my gosh. How did I let this happen to myself? Dude, it was such a boomer move. Dude, I had big boomer energy out there. I got absolutely owned. Yeah, for real. Dude, I know, but it was... Hey, to be completely fair, it was it was literally me getting a package, guy sending notifications should be sent, notification sent, I followed it, I didn't think about it, you know, it just felt so right. Always go to the site directly. I know, I know, RIP Prime, yeah, 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 I know, I messed up. All right, USPS text scammers duped his wife, so he hacked their operation. Dude, I, please, please destroy this operation. The Smish Triad Network sends up to 100,000 scam texts per day globally. One of those messages was sent to Grant Smith, who infiltrated their systems and exposed them to U.S. authorities. I really hope that not only did these people get arrested, but they also were forced to walk on Legos for, for multiple years. Multiple years. Okay, first off, we're not making fun of Prime, okay? I, I would say that that is, that is not considered unreasonable punishment for what they have done. All right. The flood of text messages starting arrived earlier this year. They carried a similar thrust. The United States Postal Service is trying to deliver a parcel but needs more details, including your credit card number. All the messages pointed to a website where the information could be entered. Yes, 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 it could. I could tell you all about that website, my friends. Like thousands of others, security researchers Grant Smith got a UP, uh, USPS package message. Many of his friends had received similar texts. A couple days earlier, he said his wife called him and said she inadvertently entered her credit card details. With little going on after the holidays, Smith began a mission. Hunt down the scammers. This is so good. Please, Smith, not only am I cheering for you because of your wife, I'm cheering for you because of me. I just can't believe the timing I had on that one. Going Liam Neeson on them. Prime scam baiting one. Dude, I love the scam bait. So good. Uh, over the course of a few weeks, Smith tracked down the Chinese language group behind the mass smishing uh, campaign. Hacked into their systems, collected evidence of their activities, and started a months-long process of gathering victim data and handing it to the USPS investigators and a U.S. bank. Uh, allowing people's cards to be protected from fraudulent activity. In total, people entered... Four uh, 438,669 nice, unique credit cards into 1,133 domains used by the scammers, Smith says. Damn. Not nice. In fact, in fact, not nice. A red team engineer and founder of offensive cybersecurity firm Phantom Security. By the way, you know, if there's ever, if there's ever been a better advertisement for your offensive security company... Or, sorry, this direction. Right here. Right here. Th this. That's it. That right there. That's how you win. That's how you get Ws. This man probably just got the most amount of, uh, what's it called, requests ever in his lifetime. Many people entered multiple cards each, he says. More than 50,000 email addresses were logged, including hundreds of university email addresses and 20 military or government email domains. The victims were spread across the United States. California, the state with the most, had 141,000 entries. What losers? Hey, California, you still suck. Not only do you have the worst national debt out of any state, you also have the most entries. Suck it, California called it. Uh, with more than 1.2 million pieces of information being entered in total. Oh, man. Can we all just be, can we all just clap for California getting owned again? Uh, this shows the mass scale of the problem, says Smith, who is presenting his findings at the DEF CON Security Conference this weekend and previously published some details of the work. I missed this. I actually would have loved to have gone to this one. I was too busy hacking with Thor, getting, uh, getting number one on, on Goldbug. Uh, by the way, I actually got there, and Thor said we they, he likes to crack puzzles and all that, and I'm going to join his team. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. It's going to be like maybe like a six-hour challenge. Maybe it's like maybe it's like a day long challenge. It's gonna be fun. I get there at six p.m. Proceed to open up my laptop, close it at two or three a.m. Wake up at seven, grab a croissant, 
grab a coffee, walk upstairs, open up my laptop, close it again at 3 a.m., go to bed, wake up at 7, get a croissant, get a coffee, open it up at uh, open up my laptop, close it again at uh, 3.30 a.m. or 4 a.m. Dude, it was awful. It was awful. It was amazing. And we got number one. Way to go, Caboose. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but the scale of the scamming is likely to be much larger, Smith says, as he didn't manage to track down all the fraudulent U- USPS websites. And the group behind the efforts have been linked to similar scams in at least a half a dozen other countries. Gone fishing. Chasing down the group didn't take long. Smith started an investigation in smishing uh, text messages he received by the uh, dodgy domain and intercepting traffic from the website. A path traversal vulnerability coupled with a squeal injection, he says. GraphQL mentioned? Is that Graph? Did we ju- did we just hear GraphQL? Uh, allowed him to grab files from the website server and read data from the database being used. I thought uh, there was just one standard site that they're all using, Smith says. Diving into the data from the initial website, he found the name of a Chinese-language Telegram account and channel, which appeared to be selling a smishing kit scammers could use to easily create the fake websites. Details of the Telegram usernames were previously published by cybersecurity company Riscurity, uh, which calls the scammers the smishing triad. The company had previously found... A- a separate squeal injection in the group's smishing kits and f- provided Smith with a copy of the tool. The smishing triad had fixed the previous flaw and started encrypting data, Smith says. Ah, uh, hackers being not good at getting hacked. How f- there is something kind of funny about that, that people with whom make their life off of being horribly shitty people and scamming people via hacking have completely vulnerable websites due to being hacked. I mean, there's just something about that that's just like, there's something about that that is just so beautiful. They're scammers, not hackers. Fair. They're too focused on the cheese. They forgot about the trap. Yeah. The best defense is the best offense. Uh, Taking it too literal. (laughs) Facts. I started reverse engineering it, figured out how everything was being encrypted, uh, how I could decrypt it, and figured out a more efficient way of grabbing the data, Smith says. From there, he says he was able to break administrative passwords on the website. Many had not been changed from the default admin username and password 123456. Classic. Great password right there. And began pulling victim data from the network of smishing websites in a faster, more automated way. I hope then afterwards he also just deleted all the data. Classic admin admin. Yeah, this is pretty much it. Smith uh, trawled Reddit and other online sources to find people reporting the scam and the URLs being used, which he subsequently published. Some of the websites running the smishing triad tools were collecting thousands of people's personal information per day, Smith says. Among other details, the websites would request people's name, addresses, payment cards, and security codes, phone numbers, dates of birth, and bank websites. This level of information can allow a scammer to make purchases online with the credit cards. Smith says his wife quickly canceled her card, but noticed that the scammer still tried to use it, for instance, with Uber. The researchers say, uh, well, I'm surprised that if they tried to use it with Uber... Oh, man, see, there's some funny things. It, it just feels like you should be able to catch these people. Uh, the researcher says he would collect data from a website and return it a few hours later, only to find hundreds of new records. Dang. See, I'm not the only one getting owned. All right. Prime Minister finally reached his final form. He's a hacker man. I'm not a hacker man. I'm not a hacker man. Uh, the researcher provided the details to a bank that ha- had contacted him after seeing the initial blog post. Smith declined to name the bank. He also reported the incidences to the FBI and later provided information to the United States Postal Inspection Service. Classic USPIS Security Enforcement Agency. I mean, they're going to come driving up in a car with the steering wheel on the wrong side of it, ready to deliver mail and or bust your ass down. Let's go, right? Yeah, U.S. piss together. Yeah, U.S. piss together. Could be worse. It could be the IRS. They should be sitting in the IRS. Okay, the IRS got a recent buff. They probably all have pistols now. Send in the IRS. Send in the IRS. It probably would work. Um, Michael Martell, a national public information officer at USPIS, says the information provided by Smith is being used as a part of an ongoing USPIS investigation and that agencies cannot comment on specific details. You know, I'm just going to I just I just want to throw this out here for a second. How it's not being investigated by an agency that has more international pull and also to be investigated by the United States Postal Inspection Service. Just it just feels bizarre to me. Is it just me? Or does that just feel like the weirdest thing ever? Like, I would assume they'd be saying, like, the FBI or maybe some other 
organization would be would be investigated. They're like, no, we're sending the Postal Service after these sons of bitches. Never knew USPIS was a thing. Yeah, it has a good task force that often works with the FBI and Homeland Security. Okay, okay. Hey, I could be wrong on this one. It's just that I'm not, yeah, messing with packages is a federal crime. That's it. Send, send in the mailman. <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> there's some sort of joke there that's like, you know how there's like the beekeeper with uh, Jason Statham? Now, instead, it's like the mailman. Send in the mailman. USPS, let's see, is actively pursuing uh, this type of information to protect the American people, identifying victims, and serve justice to the malicious actors behind it all, Martel says, um, pointing to, uh, to advice on spotting and reporting USPS package delivery scams. Uh, USPS oddly has an armed police uh, force, not security guards. Yeah, see, I would have actually, I would have literally never known. Uh, initially, Smith says he was wary about going public with his research as this kind of hacking back falls into the gray area. I don't think this falls in the gray area. It may, I mean, I understand that it, there may be some laws that you could get in trouble with, but I think that there's no sane human being that would say that this is bad. Uh, it may be breaking the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, a sweeping U.S. computer crimes law, but he is doing it against foreign-based criminals, something he is definitely not uh, the first or last to do. Yeah, it's it is shocking. A jury of your peers ain't convicting you on this one. That's fair. But it is shocking that that there could be a company that's or a group of people, a triad, a smissing triad, as they say, outside of the U.S. scamming people and you hacking back and figuring out who they are and sending good information to the authorities could potentially land you also in jail. It is vigilante justice. Like that that is that is true. It is in a sense it, it, well it, it, self defense obviously long ended with sel- when when he went and kept doing it. It sets a bad precedent. Yeah, I know man, that is such a hard one because I understand why it would be bad, right? We don't actually want people to take justice into their own hands, right? Vigilante justice, but who's the victim? Vigilante investigations is not justice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's it's only an investigation. On the other hand, OP uh, is Batman of the internet. Yeah, it's fair. Could be completely fair. The man's also happens to be Batman, except everybody knows his name. I'm trying to figure out why if the if the government can't, people have the right to do it. I don't think that that's how it works. Yeah, no, he basically broke into a thief's house. Man. It, 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 I understand why it's wrong, but I, I really feel like this should be right. I, I would be very surprised if he got in any sort of trouble for this one because it's such a – yeah, it's like a gray zone, but it's like this is an act of service. He deserves uh, he deserves a medal. Uh, the smishing triad is prolific. In addition to using postal services as lures for their scams, the Chinese-speaking group has targeted online banking, e-commerce, and payment systems in the U.S., Europe, India, Pakistan, and the United Arab Emirates, according to Sean Loveland the chief operating officer of Rescurity, which has consistently tracked the group. The smishing triad sends between 50,000 to 100,000 messages daily, according to the researcher's research, Rescurity's research. Its scam messages are sent using SMS or Apple iMessage, the latter being encrypted. <clears throat> Loveland says the triad is made up of two distinct groups, a small team led by one Chinese hacker that creates, sells, and maintains the smishing kit, and a second group of people who buy the scamming tools. A backdoor in the kit allows the creator to access details of the administrators using the kit, Smith says in a blog post. Getting scammed by the hackers. That is so good. I love that. China called it. I know. You know, if they would have said Russia or China or North, North Korea, everyone would have been like, yep, yep. Yeah, the, plot, the, the real plot twist is that Smith is actually a Chinese paid actor to make it seem like they're making progress on it. Now, that would be the ultimate. The ultimate one, right? Jayatan mentioned, potentially. It's very mature, Loveland says, of the operation. The group sells the scamming kit on Telegram for $200 per month uh, subscription, and this can be customized to show the organization the scammers are trying to impersonate. The main actor is Chinese communicating in the Chinese language, Loveland says. They do not appear to be hacking Chinese language websites or users. They know the bounce, right? If you're going to break a law on the internet, break a law in some other country. Okay. In communications with the main contact on Telegram, the individual claimed to Smith that they were a computer science student. Yep, social credit score, plus 69. Uh, the relatively low monthly subscription cost for the smishing kit means it's highly likely with the number of credit card detail scammers are collecting that those using it are making significant profits. 
Loveland says that using text messages that immediately send people a notification is more direct and more successful way of phishing compared to sending emails with malicious links included. Yeah. Well, that's just because you can hover over the link. It's so easy to tell. As a result, smishing has been on the rise in recent years, but there are some telltale signs. If you receive a message from a number or email you don't recognize, if it contains a link uh, to click on it, or if it wants you to do something urgently, you should be suspicious. I'd say the easiest way to tell is that if it's not a short code, right? If it's a five or six digit phone number, the likelihood of it being a scam is exceptionally low. Whereas if it's like a full ass number, the likelihood of it being illegal is just is just through the roof. And if it has a country code that's not America and you're in America, I mean, as the numbers go up, the chance of scam goes up. It's over 9,000. It's well over 9,000, right? USA, USA, USA. I get spam. Yeah, dude, I get, I get a bunch of them now. I've, I've seen so many of them. Texts from emails are always bad. Yes. Texts from emails are critically the worst. Uh, also my mother-in-law sends me text messages from her email. So I got, you know, it's not like I can ban all of them. I just know she, she does, she does that. Right. Uh, besides for that, uh, I'm getting text, uh, text from email addresses the most really that's, I mean, that feels so shady. Never press anything on email. Yeah. That's, that's why it never showed up to any of my meetings at Netflix. I just, I just told them that like, I'm, I'm an expert level avoider of all scams. Because I never clicked yes to any meeting. Sorry, guys. Can't risk it. This is clearly phishing. This is company-level phishing, and I'm not going to fall for it. I heard one of the best ways to do company-level phishing is you take an incident that causes every employee to become upset. And then right after that incident, you send out a survey that's a phishing scam for company, like company morale survey. And you can get, apparently, people so good with that. Like, like when a layoff happens, if right afterwards you hit them with a malicious test, oh man, you can get them so good because people are so ready to get in there and be like, you know what? Those sons of bitches, I absolutely hate them. And then boom, they get just owned. Absolutely owned. And I don't blame them. I'd want to complain too. The name is the Primogen.